Good evening and welcome to the Nevis Newscast. Today is Wednesday, February 8th, 2017. I'm Donis Wilkinson Keynes. The Ministry of Communications and Works has in the last few days begun a road improvement project that will benefit residents of Bracia's estate and others who traverse the area. On Monday, February 6th, Director of the Public Works Department, Raoul Pemberton, gave us an update on that project. The span of this project, 8,000 feet of road, it starts from the Island Main Road, Brazier's intersection, coming through the Brazier's development, that is through the Hunkins, um, the Hunkins development, going all the way up to church ground, that is ending by Berlin Clark's property. Also, this road takes us to the back entrance or the back road of Brazier's. It's sometimes referred to as the old road of Brazier's estate. The work we have here, it started just about 10 days ago, and I think we've done quite a bit um, within that 10 days period. We've completed um, some pipe work, and we've also done over 2,000 feet of road, that is excavation, filling, and grading, waiting for the construction of the drainage system which is an integral part of this project. Extensive work in terms of pipe installation has also been done, and noted manager of the Nevis Water Department, Roger Hanley. One of the major um, roles that the project plays is that we will be condemning a large portion of uh, the four-inch mains that passes through residential properties. Um, there would be significant improvement as far as the transmission and distribution of water is concerned um, where we would have had a mixture of one inch and half inch mains that serves the the public in this area um, the replacement of this pipeline is also very important as it transmit water from the morning star reservoir to the hamilton reservoir as necessary so this project is a very important project and we uh, have taken the opportunity to install service connections where applicable and it will further enhance the the, the distribution system in the area. Junior Minister of Works, the Honorable Troy Liebert, who toured the site on Monday, said he was proud of the work that has taken place so far. We've been able to install a tremendous amount of pipe in just 10 days, over 26 hundred feet of pipe and uh, that is no small feat. We, I'm very happy that we were also able to engage some of our local service providers. On this job we engage a few local excavators, backhoes, trucks. It's, it's one of those feel-good stories where we are able to do work for the people of Nevis. This road in Bridges is one of those places, one of those roads that really needed upgrading. I've had several complaints from residents in the areas and I'm happy that the government was able to respond and able to come out at this time to bring some relief to the good people of Bridges. Minister Leibold also used the opportunity to commend the staff of the Public Works and the Nevis Water Departments who have been dedicating long days and weekends to the island's road enhancement program. The Nevis Athletics Stadium project is well on the way with the expectation that the first phase will be completed by the end of March. That is according to manager of the project, Timothy Keynes. In terms of the civil works, we started on the 15th of December. Um, of course, the planning and preparation was about 18 months uh, prior to that. Um, we expected to complete the track and the lighting um, by 31st of March. That's it timeline that we're working with, of course, um, depending on what we meet going forward in terms of weather and any any variances, then that, um, that uh, project completion date could change. But March 31st is what we're working with. With a little more than seven weeks to the completion date for this phase, Keynes spoke to the current stage of the project. We are at what we call blinding level, where we put in the concrete curbing, we've compacted the sub-base which is what we are standing on, compacted, um, level, totally leveled. You can see um, the whole area of the 400 meter track has been uh, completely leveled. We are now putting in the concrete curbing. This process probably run uh, the rest of the week. 
then we begin filling with the crush stone for the asphalt left. It's a 400 meter track. We have nine lanes, um, international standard, Mondo surface. Um, pretty much what you see at the, uh, the Olympics and the World Games, the World Championships. That's the, the caliber of track that we'll be having here. So the track, the main track, the warm-up track and the lighting is what we'll have completed. There are some conversations now in terms of getting some temporary seating in um, for the inter-primary event if it's, if it's going to be held here. So that would be decided over the, the next week or so, I think. The service contractor for the Nevis Athletics Stadium project is Mondo USA. Spencer Brand is the architect, while Lefko Equipment Rental and Construction Company Limited and Sorry Paving are the civil works contractors. This first phase, the, the track, the lighting, and the warm-up facility, um, estimated at $10.1 million. We are currently on budget. So um, we're expecting that we'll finish on, on, on budget. On Tuesday, February 7th, Keynes facilitated a tour of the construction site for Permanent Secretary in the Premier's Ministry, Wakely Daniel, and Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Carl Williams. While earlier today, the Cabinet of the Nevis Island Administration also visited the site at Long Point. The Honorable Vance Amy, Minister of Labor, says a lot more needs to be done to engage citizens and residents in the workings of the CARICOM Single Market and Economy, CSME, and the many opportunities available. In an interview with the St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service, Premier Amy said because people have not been fully acquainted with the provisions of the CSME over the years, their general attitude towards the program has been rejection. Premier Amy said because of this lack of knowledge and appreciation, oftentimes nationals of St. Kitts and Nevis act out when nationals from another CARICOM country enter the Federation and start to work. Referencing the CSME program to the four-day workshop presently being held at the Ocean Terrace Inn, which is aimed at establishing a comprehensive labor market information system, the Minister of Labor said that it is an effort to remove those gray areas and misunderstandings. He noted that such training is important as it paints a clearer picture, thus providing persons the avenue to learn more. Meantime, the Minister of Labor said there is the need to acquire the Caribbean Vocational Qualification CBQ Skills Certificate so that if our nationals have to travel anywhere, they will also have the ability to work in other countries, adding, however, that it is better for them to equip themselves with the necessary skills and qualification to work here so that the need for external employment or labor to come would be minimized. Still to come, Four Seasons and Nisbet Plantation named Best Hotels in St. Kitts and Nevis. The details after this break. One of the few places that has an untouched beauty that has captivated the hearts of many. Nevis is everything you imagine. Welcome back. U.S. News and World Report has named two of Nevis's resorts as the best in the Federation. U.S. News ranked the top hotels in St. Kitts and Nevis based on an unbiased analysis of awards, expert recommendations, and user ratings. Number one is the Four Seasons Resort Nevis. The five-star, ultra-luxurious hideaway fringing Nevis's western coast maintains its Caribbean ambience along Pinnies Beach without sacrificing its brand-wide exceptional service. The Nisbet Plantation Beach Club is number two. Surrounded by 30 acres of tropical palms and powdery sands, this former 18th century sugar plantation set along Nevis's northeastern corner impresses guests with its rustic charm. Also making the list at number five is the Mount Nevis Hotel. This luxury hotel offers commanding views of the Caribbean Sea. You can enjoy the scenery from your private balcony or patio, one of Mount Nevis's 32 
tropical themed sweets. Evan Shields, travel editor at US News, says the award-winning hotels on the US News Best Hotels rankings meet the standards of both everyday travelers and industry experts in offering exceptional customer service and luxury amenities. Also making the list were Otley's Plantation Inn and the Senkis Marriott and Royal Beach Casino, ranking at third and fourth respectively. Meantime, of the six luxury hotels, Two earned a gold badge for scoring in the top 10% of the best hotels in the Caribbean. They are the Four Seasons Resort Nevis and the Nisbet Plantation Beach Club. The Anglican Churches on Nevis are inviting their members and friends to participate in two more of the activities the Nevis region of the Anglican Communion will hold this month as it celebrates the 175th anniversary of the Diocese of the Northeastern Caribbean and Aruba. An event the church is calling a pilgrimage is set for this Saturday. On the 11th, it's a Saturday morning, we're hoping to have that pilgrimage where we're asking all Anglicans and friends of Anglicans, I'm sure, to have a, a short walk and a bit of fellowship um, and also, of course, exercise. You have health benefits. So we are hoping that on the 11th, we will begin at around 6 a.m. at the St. Thomas Parish Church and we'll make our way down to the Cottle Church. We're hoping to have t-shirts with the diocesan logo on the front and on the back. It should read our theme for our 175th celebration, which is celebrating our heritage, seizing the moment, embracing the future. That is what we are hoping to. Do the t-shirts come at a cost? Yes, that has not been finalized, but it will be less than $30. Meantime, the Anglican churches have also planned a rally for later this month as part of the celebration, an event in which the general public is also welcomed to participate. They're hoping that T-shirt also may be able to use on the 19th, in the afternoon of the 19th, when we're having to have a procession from the square in town. And we are hoping to end at a venue which is still to be determined and have a rally where we showcase and highlight mainly our young persons. But we, went, we will not limit it to the young persons. But we wanted the young persons to have an active role so they feel a part of it. And so we're hoping to have a rally on the 19th where they can showcase their talents and their gifts to the glory of God. And we're hoping to start about 4.30 the latest, and hopefully it will end by about 7 o'clock. We're hoping to have a band to accommodate us in the march, and at the end of it, we have one big celebration and fellowship, and we showcase our talents and gifts as part of our heritage as Anglicans here in Nevis. Reverend Father Christopher Archibald of the St. Paul's Anglican Church. That's how we end this evening's edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, thank you for viewing. I'm Donis Wilkinson Keynes. Good night. One of the few places that has an untouched beauty that has captivated the hearts of many. Nevis is everything you imagine.